Hello there everybody, Robin Nichols back with you talking today about working with RAW files and Photoshop Elements. Uh, today of course we're working with Photoshop Elements 12, uh, but what I'm telling you is uh, totally appropriate for uh, 11, 10, 9 and so on and so forth. Uh, one of the things we need to learn about RAW files is what is the difference between a RAW file and a JPEG. Well, very simply a JPEG is small, a RAW file is very big. A JPEG is 8-bit, a RAW file may be uh, 10 or 12-bit or even 14-bit, depending on the camera manufacturer and what they claim. Uh, what this means is there's just a huge amount of information in a 10 or 12-bit file compared to the lowly 8 bits of information. So although it sounds all high techy, you can just assume that a RAW file has 4 or maybe 5 or even more times the information in, uh, in its file format. You can prove that to yourself simply by looking at the size of a RAW file. For example, here's a RAW file. This is a Canon RAW file, um, and this is 28.4 megabytes. If I were shooting JPEGs, this would be about 7 or 8 megabytes. So you can see we get a considerably larger file, and that means I've got much more wiggle room, I've got much more potential that I can extract from this RAW file. It also means that although JPEGs are actually fantastic, they're really good, they can only be edited up to a point. And once you go past that point, you begin to degenerate a little bit. And that's simply because there's not enough information in the editor, in the, ed the editing stage in a JPEG to allow it to be fiddled around with too much. Now, the really annoying thing about RAW files is very simple. All RAW files are different. Huh? How does that work? I've got no idea. I have to ex explain, you know. When we get, for example, a new camera, it doesn't matter if it's a Canon camera or a Nikon camera or whatever brand, simply because it's a new camera model means it's going to have a RAW file that is different from the previous Canon or Nikon camera model. It's very, very annoying. So what this means is, it may mean actually nothing to you, but what this means is that if you've just bought a brand new camera but you're using an old version of Photoshop, let's say 11 or 10, and double click on the RAW file in this case, this is a Canon RAW file here, you may find that it'll say, eh, sorry, can't open it, to which you burst into tears and go, why have I bought this camera? All it means is the RAW file that's associated with your camera model is not compatible or hasn't been updated for Adobe Photoshop Elements to read it. Don't panic. What we can do is this. I'm going to click Cancel for the time being. Is We can go to the Help menu and we can go immediately and check for updates. This generally should actually work automatically, but if it hasn't, you'll have to go to Updates. And you may find, if you've... Uh, bought a reasonably new camera, you may find there is an update, and it may be Camera Raw 7.8 or Camera Raw 8.0, for example, and you just simply download it and install it. It's free, relatively small, it may be 100 megabytes or something, but it just means it's updating it for your latest RAW file format. And you'll see on Adobe's website a whole list of cameras that this new version, maybe Camera Raw 8.0, is compatible with. So it only really affects those people who've never updated their software or have just walked out of a camera shop with a brand new camera. Okay, back to that. Let's just go back into uh, my file open situation here, and I'm going to scroll down to the bottom, and we're going to choose a sumo wrestling photo. Let's just get one of one of the boys falling out. There's a couple of ones where they actually fell into the audience here. Is it this one? Always going, going, gone. Always just stepping there very gracefully. There's actually nothing graceful about sumo at all. When they go out the ring, you don't need to be in the front row. Here we go. There's the guys flying out of the front row. So I'm just going to simply click on open. I could double-click it, and I could just drag it into the window. Whoa, okay. So what happens is here is that window. That's a new window. So this is the camera raw window. And as it is, it actually says camera raw 8.0. So this is, I think, the latest version. Anyway, it works with my Canon 5D Mark III file. Because the Mark III now is, you know, a year or so old. And so I've updated it. Once you've updated it, once you don't need to update it, unless, of course, I go and buy the Canon Mark IV, if and when that ever comes out. So it's a little bit like an editor within an editor, because we've got the editor in the background, and we have the raw window here. And the raw window has all the information in it to allow me to make a really good edit. The really cool thing about RAW files is this, and for me it's this, is it doesn't matter what white balance you shoot in, you know, and so your pictures can come out yellowish or orangish or reddish or bluish. I can just go up to the white balance setting here and change it back to whatever camera setting I think is better. Let's say tungsten. Whoa, okay. So you could see here, as shot, everything's a bit on the warm side. So I can say, actually, Robin, idiot, it's in a tungsten, it's all incandescent lighting. I should have had it set to 
tungsten in my camera. How cool is this? Click on that, bang, everything looks normal colour. You can do this to JPEG, but it puts a strain on the editing. It puts a strain on the file, so you may find at the end of the day uh, that your file looks a little bit dodgy, a little bit broken up, because you've shifted that colour so much. In a RAW file, it doesn't make any difference at all, it's dead easy. Now I can fine-tune that by making it a little bit green, or a bit of hair on his back a little bit, or a little bit pinker magenta. You, know, you can do that if you think that's necessary. So how cool is that? That's very good. Then we can associate, um, or we can just associate, adjust the brightness. So just make the exposure lighter or darker, should we want to do that. We can also, as you can see here, I don't need to read everything out here, but you can see I can make it less or more contrasty. So lowering the contrast clearly shows more detail in the black areas. Okay, so it's usually a combination of a number of these things. One of the massive advantages of the RAW file converter, of course, is this, the ability to darken highlights. This is not a good example here, but for example, if you've got a highlight on somebody's head or just somewhere in the, in the picture where it's just gone too white, you can darken that white down. It's a fantastic feature. You can either do that with the highlights or just the whites, which will also have a little bit of effect. Conversely, of course, we can brighten up the whites. It's not a very flattering picture, this, is it? Um, I'm going to change the picture. Uh, we're now using this uh, 5224. This is number 5224. Now, I'm going to click on Done. Okay. And you'll notice if I go back into here and I go back down here to 5244, wherever that may be, 5244, uh, you'll notice something curious has happened. I'm hoping 5244. Was it 5244? No, it wasn't. 5244. Here we go, I need to go and find it. Now I can actually find it because I've actually processed this picture sort of and I didn't say cancel, I said done. So I'm pretty sure there will be an odd looking file in between one of these raw files. If I just scroll through these icons, there we go. There's 5244. And there's the odd looking file. This is an XMP file. This is a set of instructions that by changing this raw file, I've automatically generated and it's just stuck it in there. Okay, so if I go back and open this, it opens back into the window again. Let's say, let's say we make this black and white. And I'm going to click Done. Okay, I'll go back and choose Open. In fact, this time I'm going to choose Open Recently Edited File. So it's going to go and find that raw file. Bingo, opens back as black and white. Okay, all I've done is changed that set of instructions. So when I choose Open, it goes and reads the XMP file and goes. Little, little, little. Okay, Robin made that black and white last time. Let's just open it and apply black and white. I can then go back and make it go back colour again. Ha <laughs> ha! Click done. And so on and so forth. So every time we do it, it changes the set of instructions on this XMP file. Now, if I go and do this, let's go and have, I'll just go and cheat a little bit. I'm going to, again, open this file. I'm going to make it go black and white, exactly as we did before. And there we go. Make it go black and click on done, or sort of black and white. Now, I'm going to cheat. I'm going to go open, and I'm going to scroll down to the bottom here. And I'm going to find that file. I'm going to delete that set of instructions. Oh, no, don't delete it. So here it is, down here. No, it isn't. It's up the top here. Um, and I've had students who said, oh, Robin, I found all these funny-looking files in my, in my filing area. I've just deleted a lot. So let's say delete this. Guess what's going to happen? If I delete that, it loses the set of instructions. So we open 5244 again. And you find it just goes back to the original instructions, which is just open as is. All right, so I need to go back and then change it. So never lose those instructions because they're very valuable, the XMP file. They take no space whatsoever. It's a little text file. It's about 50 kilobytes or something. No space whatsoever. Okay, onwards. So you can see here we can adjust the brightness and the contrast to a fantastically fine degree. It's a really nice little capability. What else can we do with RAW files? Well, this one's very cool. This is called Clarity. And this allows me to, in fact, I did promise you to go and open another picture, didn't I? Because that's just not uh, terribly, what's the word? Uh, nice to look at. Here's another one of a poor chap fell right out into the, dear oh dear, that's 5244. Yeah, he actually landed on somebody. And the irony is you, you pay so much extra money to sit in the front row seats. And then you have like a 250 kilogram monster coming flying across the, I was going to say canvas, but it's not across the sand, the clay pan here that they use. There we go. So I'll just choose another one of my big boys here. Pretty soon find 
Doing an awful lot of grappling, an awful lot of nothing else, which is not terribly exciting. Expecting to get one of somebody flying out. Ring, come on, the ring you go. Okay, I think just one of these will do nicely. Oh, you can see I'm shooting in sequence mode, very high speed. I think we'll just open this guy here. Here we go, the, the, the sort of precursor to the fight. I'm going to choose tungsten, get that right. It needs brightening up about half a stop, something like that, maybe even a full stop. There we go, that's looking pretty good. So, um, now when I output them, so as you saw, I click done. That just writes the text. If I choose open image, of course it writes the XMP file as well, and that, that stores it for later. By opening the image, I take it into Adobe Photoshop Elements editor window, and that allows me to then edit stuff. Now, why, why would you do that? Because we've already done that, haven't we? Well, the simple thing is, if we want to do something like sophisticated retouching, we may want to buzz around the ring here. Whoops. We may want to buzz around the ring and, with my retouching, just you know, tidy up the bits that this guy with the brush didn't pick up. I can tidy that up. So retouching is a really good way uh, to apply uh, your editing skills using a RAW file. Uh, you really don't necessarily need to change the color and the brightness and the sharpness because you've just done all that in Photoshop RAW file window. So adding layers, we can add multiple layers for example, we can add text, we can add special effects. All those extra things will be done in the edit window whereas the basic tone, color and sharpness will be done in the RAW window. I'm just going to close this down, I won't save it, and I'll go and open it up again. In fact, I'll, what I'll do is I'll go and say, File, Open Recently Edited, there's 97, and we'll open this up again. Just to finish off my little discussion here, we've got Clarity, which is fantastic because that allows me to make everything sort of looks like it makes things sharper and more contrasty at the same time. As you can see, it's fairly dramatic. That doesn't work all the time. We have Vibrance, which just increases or decreases the colour compared to saturation, which is way more dramatic. And I always describe saturation as being one, you can actually overcook something, you can ruin it with saturation. But if you want to just tweak the colour, vibrance is your man, because it just allows you just to get the colour just right. Now we have a number of tabs here, okay, three tabs in fact. So the second tab is all about sharpening, and this allows me to apply some unsharp mask uh, to this image. So I can really beef up the clarity, and you can see here, unfortunately, I'm also getting a little bit of noise, because I think I shot this at 3,200 ISO. So I can reduce the noise. Reducing the noise very simply allows me to soften it ever so slightly. It's a very unflattering pose. Um, and here we go. So I can just apply some luminance noise, and you can see it actually gets rid of a lot of that noise very simply by doing that. So very, very powerful tool. Finally, the last thing is I can actually, if I want to, change calibration. Okay, And this allows me to change my picture style, which is essentially uh, little color recipes. I'd just basically leave that as it is. So the main two windows, of course, are the basic and the detail window. These are two very powerful tools. Down the bottom, we have the ability to change uh, the depth. Because it's a raw file, we can output them as 16 bits per channel. The problem with that is not all the functions in the editor are available in 16-bit. If we want to preserve every last bit of quality, we'd output as 16-bit. Otherwise, we can output as 8-bit per channel, which gives you a smaller file and, of course, all the functionality in the editor window properly. Up the top left, we have a couple of very simple tools, like the hand tool for paddling it around the image. We have This is a white balance tool. It allows me to just click on the colors and it just resets the color depending on I, whether I hit on the right pixels or not. It's a little bit hit and miss that one. We have the ability to crop the image like that and I just press enter and it'll crop the image. Uh, we have the ability to level or straighten uneven horizons, the ability to remove red eye removal uh, and the ability to rotate counterclockwise or clockwise and the ability to uh, decide where we want to put our sidecar files. So we can put them into a database, as it says here, or we can just stick them, as you saw, um, as sidecar files. And a sidecar file means it just the XMP file sits next to the raw original files. Uh, you can apply sharpening to your images or just to the previews. Um, and as you can see here, we can convert 
to DNG files should we want to do that. But, you know, quite a nice little function here. Uh, we can save the image. Okay, obviously save the image once we've done some tweaking, so we don't need to necessarily open it into Photoshop Elements Editor. We can just save it, save it in the same location, very sensible. Uh, but we can save it as a DNG file. A DNG file is a digital negative. DNG is an Adobe file format. What this means is any DNG file can be where almost all application. So it's like a universal raw file, rather like a JPEG is a universal picture file. So it's a very nice thing to have. It's an Adobe invention. You can buy a DNG converter, or you can rather download, I think it's free, from the Adobe website if you want to do that. So if you've just bought your camera and you don't want to wait five months for Adobe to catch up with the raw file conversion, simply download its DNG converter and you'll be away. Okay, and very simply that's pretty much all I've got to say at this time on raw files. It's a fantastic file format, uh, allows you a fantastic amount of, as one student described it, wiggle room when it comes around to editing your pictures and basically just opens up the possibilities to change, modify and improve the colour, the contrast, the brightness, the tonality and of course the sharpness of your images prior to advanced retouching in the edit window.